This is KGW News at Sunrise. So uh, we're seeing this as a um, huge step forward in the pandemic where we've struggled to find step forward at times. Teachers and school staff in Salem have already gotten the COVID vaccine. But teachers elsewhere in Oregon are still waiting for details so they can get their shots. Plus, the Tokyo Olympics face new questions this morning. Organizers announced they still expect the worldwide event will start in July. But the people of Japan say, uh-uh, not so fast. They are worried, of course, about COVID. Well, here's something else that's been impacted by the pandemic. Puppy love. You're working from home, not traveling as much. That's led to a lot of people saying, let's get a dog. And scammers are saying, let's take advantage of that. Later this hour, we're going to show you what to look for when purchasing a puppy so you don't get scammed. Welcome to Friday here on the Sunrise Show. Uh, Nina, Brenda, Rodney, we all like the puppies. <laughs> we all like the Fridays. And Rod, we like ourselves a clean Friday forecast. What do you got for yeah, us? Yeah, I have a dry day today, a dry day tomorrow as well, and then that rainy Sunday. We'll get into all of that. Right now, we have some clearing up around that story. The rest of us from Portland down in Salem are still mostly cloudy. We're at 40, pretty comfortable outside here in the Rose City. Partly sunny, mid-40s at noon. And then later today, most sunny. I think 48 will be Portland's high. Back to you. Like the sound of that. Thank you, Rod. Let's start your Friday morning with three things to know about COVID. Teachers and school staff in Oregon are expected to start getting their vaccines on Monday. It's not clear yet how they'll get notified when it's their turn and where they can go. We hope to learn more at 11 o'clock this morning when Governor Brown, the Oregon Department of Education and state health officials hold a press conference. Number two, about 7,000 teachers and school employees in Salem have already gotten their COVID shots. The state gave them permission to start early since Salem Health had finished vaccinating healthcare workers and other people in phase 1A. Here's what the district superintendent told us. Vaccinations to us have been something that have been on our minds, so that feels um, like a relief because we have one more layer of protection for educators as they come back into classrooms with kids. She told us she doesn't know quite yet if kids will actually return to the classroom by the end of next month, but this is big progress. And number three, there's a new COVID outbreak at Sandy Am Correctional Institute in Salem. It's one of 16 active outbreaks in prisons and jails around Oregon. Three more people have also died. Mike Benner reports. It's sad. It's coming up on one year since Nellie Love last saw her fiance, incarcerated at Two Rivers Correctional Institution in Umatilla. COVID is to blame. I feel lonely. I mean, I'm used to driving three hours to go see him. Um, I can't do that during a pandemic, so there's no visits. Chances are that won't be changing anytime soon. On Thursday, the Oregon Department of Corrections announced that in the last two days, three adults in custody died after testing positive for COVID. Two of them were at Two Rivers. Love can't help but worry about her fiance. It's like, is he going to be okay? Is he going to be, is he sick? Is he, is he worried? I'm worried and, and stuff. I mean, it's, it's scary. Since the start of the pandemic, nearly 4,000 adults in custody and staff members have tested positive for COVID across Oregon's prison system. In fact, KGW has learned of an outbreak at the Santiam Correctional Institution in Salem. More than 120 adults in custody have tested positive for COVID, 51 of them on Thursday alone. The facility is now going into a 14-day quarantine that includes testing of symptomatic patients and daily symptom interviews with all adults in custody, among other things. None of this comes as a surprise to love. Maybe pray and they can do something about this. I mean, it's scary for us that have loved ones behind bars. In Portland, Mike Benner for KGW News. So we did reach out to the Oregon Department of Corrections for an interview, but they declined to talk with us. We know last month they received and administered 400 doses of the vaccine. Most of those went to staff and inmates who clean COVID units. 
Well, here is a progress report on how the rest of Oregon is doing with vaccinations. Oregon so far has given out more than 253,000 doses. That's about 218,000 people vaccinated with at least their first shot. Now in Washington, they've given out more than 335,000 doses so far. Remember, Governor Jay Inslee has set a pretty lofty goal for Washington. He wants them to be giving out 45,000 shots a day. Right now, they're only averaging averaging about 15,000. So in order to help them get there, Washington will open up four mass vaccine sites around the state. And the closest one to us is at the Clark County Fairgrounds in Ridgefield. They're pretty confident that one can open on Monday. In Oregon, here are some of the vaccination sites we know of so far. The one at the state fairgrounds in Salem. It's been open for a couple weeks. Kaiser is doing vaccinations at the convention center, but it is invite only and more hospital systems will join them on Monday. And the newest site is at the Portland Airport. It's a drive through one and also hmm. invite only. Well, President Biden was busy during his first full day in office. He signed more executive orders to ramp up COVID vaccinations, expand testing and reopen schools. NBC's Kristen Welker has more on that for us this morning from Washington, D.C. Good morning to you. Coming up on today in his first full day in office, President Biden calling the vaccine rollout so far a dismal failure. The president pledging that the pandemic will be defeated, though, and signing executive orders, including requiring masks in most planes, trains and airports, increasing the number of COVID vaccination sites by creating federal vaccination centers and planning to invoke the Defense Production Act. That would help him speed up vaccine production. But also on Thursday, Dr. Anthony Fauci saying he sees positive signs, but that there are still issues with the vaccine supply and vaccine distribution. So Biden's goal is 100 million shots in 100 days. Meanwhile, President Biden is facing some Republican pushback for his executive orders on day one, including rejoining the Paris Climate Agreement and canceling the Keystone Pipeline, plus a plan for a path to citizenship for 11 million undocumented immigrants. We'll have all the reaction and fallout coming up on today. Back to you. Well, right now we wanted to get to the latest on former President Trump's impeachment trial. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell says he wants to wait until next month to start the trial. So that would give impeachment managers and the former president's defense team at least all of next week to prepare. New Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer still has to agree to that idea. And as of right now, House Democrats still have the ability to send the impeachment article over to the Senate at any time and start the trial the very next day. Okay, let's get to this morning's poll because we are talking the Summer Olympics in Tokyo. They are supposed to kick off six months from today. Despite cancellation rumors, Japan's prime minister insists the games will go on as planned in July. But get this, they haven't even started vaccinating people and they're not expected to start for another month. Polls there show as many as 80% of people want the games postponed or canceled. The Olympic Committee has already made it clear that it won't postpone them again. If the games can't be held this year, they're canceled. And that's only happened during times of war. So here's what a couple Olympic athletes have to say about it. Sometimes I panic a little bit, but um, overall, I'm very positive about it. I've been hyping myself up for the Olympics for so long now that like, I just, I just want it to come already. Okay, now it's your turn to weigh in and we're doing this on Twitter. Should the summer games still be held? And look at this overwhelmingly 73% of you saying no. You can go to our KGW News account on Twitter and vote. If you don't use Twitter, you can text us at the number there on your screen 503-226-5088. I'm in the minority. Uh, I admit, I just voted in that poll and uh, I was part of that 24%. And Brenda, I told you I voted yes. And you said, you want the Olympics? <laughs> and I said, it's not like I want it, but if you had to ask me, should we have them or shouldn't we have them? I'd say, yes, let's have them without fans, right? I think we've already said that. Yeah, set you the, can't have fans. No, do not have fans there. Uh, maybe ban travel uh, over there for the three weeks during the Olympics. But I think about the athletes. 
I think about all the money that can be made for businesses with everything that comes with the Olympics. They've waited now in an extra year. Some of these people have been waiting five years. So I say let's do it. they've been quarantining, I'm sure, yeah. some of them But no fans. Well. You yeah. can't. If they yeah. want to have fans, then I'd say no. no They're going to have one hellaciously large bubble because they need more than 14 days. I'd want all those people before they come back right. to well, sure. make sure that they were okay. Interesting. We're going to keep the conversation going throughout the morning, so weigh in on that poll. Right now, we want Rod Hill to weigh in on our weather forecast. Good morning again, Rod. Good morning. Hey, I'm with Drew, but only because I still have the hope that the U.S. team will call me. Rod, we need you. <laughs> For All what? Right. Well, hey. <laughs> yeah, for what? <laughs> I can do things. Come on. <laughs> All right. Here we have a lot of clouds still over Oregon as a whole. Some clearing up to our north. See this little spin now moving uh, across Northern California. That's the low that brought us that rain that we started off yesterday with. So that's dropped well to the south and uh, left over some specks of moisture. These are mostly snow flurries out toward Pendleton, uh, up around Mount St. Helens, a little bit of rain uh, down in uh, outside of Eugene and even up uh, around Seattle, but not much, just traceable stuff. So generally, at least for our region, generally, this is a dry day moving forward. We're uh, 39 in Salem, holding at 40 in Portland, enough cloud cover that's kept the temperatures up a little bit tonight. Uh, 41 in Astoria, the Dow's above freezing, and then you have 32 out in Baker City. Real quick look at future cast. This shows uh, sunshine coming later today, so kind of partly sunny too, especially north of Portland clearing out. And then tomorrow, I think we will have some fog and low clouds. This doesn't show it, but what it does show are the clouds coming in tomorrow night, and there's the rain Sunday morning at the coast, and that will sweep in quickly during the day on Sunday. 48 today, 45 tomorrow, the rainy 43 on Sunday. Still looking at snow levels 1,000 to 1,500 feet on Monday, but the precipitation is starting to look more limited on that particular day. Okay, I'm, hmm. I'm done. Hmm, <laughs> for done for now. All right, Rod, thanks. Hey, if you guys want to fly, you'll have to wear a mask. President Biden made that happen with the stroke of his pen. More on the new law coming up. And the co-owner of a glass design studio here in Portland is now at the center of a reality TV series. So five minutes from now, we're going to take you inside her local studio and let you know when you can check out this show.